Hello YouTube, in this video, I continue working on my game by adding rocks and grass to the terrain. I know, exciting right? I just want to talk about what the game will actually be like first. So I want it set on some sort of like alien moon or something like that, and I want to have like a very creepy and unnatural vibe. So I want the game to be split up into kind of like two main areas. There's the regular open world, which I pretty much sculpted with the terrain editor last episode. I also want to have some areas separate from the open world where the player will go in and load individually. Those sections will probably be like structured linear levels so the player can have a break from just exploring the open world. Okay, so let's get back to working on the game. So I first want to get some textures for the ground so we're not just looking at a bunch of gray squares. So to get these textures, I just basically went outside and just started taking pictures of interesting things on the ground. So I wanted the ground to be PBR. That basically means I need a bunch of separate textures that I load up into a material which makes it look realistic. I guess. So in the PBR textures, I'll use the pictures that I took off the ground as the diffuse map. But to actually make these textures, I loaded up a program called Materialize, which basically just generates a bunch of the PBR maps that I need from that one diffuse texture. So I then changed the default texture of the terrain to Ground 2, and I accidentally entered Play Mode. I entered Play Mode by accident because I wanted to split my terrain up into chunks so it would actually load. I thought my computer would just instantly crash, but it didn't, and I actually got around a solid 250 FPS. While I was exploring the terrain that I made, I realized that the hills were just really, really high and the valleys were just like really low. So I needed to re-sculpt the terrain for I think the fourth time now. After sculpting the terrain three other times, I feel like I'm a pro now. So this only took me like eight hours to do, opposed to like a week. Now I think it looks a lot better than what it did before, but it's still very bland and I think I need to spice it up a little bit. So I'm gonna add some rocks. Because I want the game set on some sort of alien moon, I want the rocks to look kind of unnatural. So I want them to have like cracks in them and have them have like an interior of some sort of purple substance. So I loaded up Blender and started working on it. So I started the process with the scaled version of the default cube. Next I spent a little bit on the detailed sculpts and here's the end result. Then I had to retopologize so I can actually get a mesh that Unity can handle. Next I had to UV unwrap it, which is basically skinning the mesh so 2D textures can be applied to it. Next I had to bake the normal map, which basically means taking all the detail from the high poly mesh and putting it on the low poly mesh. So it's basically magic, and here's the result. Next I baked out the cavity map, which basically makes the object look a lot better. After that I painted out the metallic map which basically makes all the parts that should be metal, metal, and all the parts that should be non-metal, non-metal. After that, I texture painted the rock so it actually looks like a rock. I used my Ground 5 texture as a stencil for the rock, which is ironic because Ground 5 is actually tree bark. After that, I painted out the smoothness map, so parts that should be smooth are smooth, and parts that should be rough are rough. I then made different level of detail meshes, so rocks that are farther away from the player can be rendered with lower polygon counts. I then created an emission shader in Unity to have the parts of the rock that are purple actually glow. I love the result, but one rock's not gonna cut it. So I did this 11 more times, and here's all the rocks. So, you probably have a lot of questions, and the biggest one is probably, what's just strange stuff that I just landed in? Well, I'm glad you're curious, because it's called grass, and it is the bane of my existence. Now, modern computer hardware has come a long way, but there's no way that any modern computer can handle the 96 trillion blades of grass that a game of my size would probably need. So to fix this problem, we take a flat plane and put a picture of grass on it and then duplicate it a bunch of times in different directions. With this method, developers can make a lot of grass objects and not have to worry too much about its performance. In real life, grass will sway in the wind. And to accomplish this in video games, 
we need to use shaders with vertex displacement. So I applied both these little tricks to grass objects in my game, and here's the result. Now for my game, I'm using the high definition render pipeline in Unity. I also don't know what that means, but one thing I do know about it is that the paint grass option with terrain doesn't work. So to work around this, we need to tell Unity that our grass is actually trees and paint them on that way. This however kind of works. The painting works just fine, and I can paint grass wherever I want. This works perfectly on flat surfaces, but once we start getting onto slopes, the grass will just form staircases because trees just always grow straight up. And because Unity thinks that my grass is trees, it's making the grass grow straight up and not to the side following the hill like I want it to. So I guess I'll just wait for the next update in Unity when they add support for painting grass and terrain. Or not. Now I turn to Polybrush. Unity's built-in prefab painter. And then when I started trying to paint with it, nothing happened. According to Google, Polybrush doesn't work at all with the terrain system because Unity expects you to be using the grass paint feature, which isn't available in HDRP. Hopelessly, I searched Google to try to find something that would fix my problems. And then I found it, a free prefab painter that works on terrain. This was perfect. So now I can mass place grass objects instead of having to manually place them. Now there's one more thing I need to do in order to get good performance with my grass, and that would be static batching. I don't really want to get into the details of static batching and draw calls, but I needed it badly. I think it may have been with the vertex displacement with the wind shader, but it was just not working, and I was getting very frustrated because I spent about a week making virtual grass. Now, at the beginning of summer, when I first started working on the game, I fully expected to have to scale the project back. So I planned on scaling it back, but I never really gave myself the ability to scale it back. Because open world games are so big in general, you can't really scale them back too much without them being still just massive projects. And currently, I don't have the skills or experience to actually make one. So I decided that I'm going to take a break from this project. I definitely want to come back to it eventually, but I don't know if it will happen anytime soon. This summer was a big learning experience for me, and I don't regret it at all. I do want to work on another game, but this time a lot smaller. And I have some ideas for it, but it's definitely not all planned out. Thank you so much for watching. According to YouTube statistics, 83% of the people who watched the last episode were subscribed, which may sound like it's really good, which it is. But it also means YouTube's not showing my video to any new people. So, if you enjoyed this video, please consider sharing it with somebody you know. Especially if you think they would like it. It would really help me out, and I'd greatly appreciate it. But, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.